What up YouTube, here with a review video for AEW Fighter Fest Week 1 um, I'm going to be going over everything that took place with uh, AEW Dynamite and Rampage this past week And then after reviewing Week 1, uh, we're going to take a look and preview Fighter Fest Week 2 Anyways, let's get into the video Um AEW Fighter Fest uh, Week 1 kicked off uh, with the TNT title being on the line. Wardlow, after uh, defeating Scorpio Sky uh, two weeks ago to become the new TNT champion, uh, his first week as the TNT champion, he puts that title on the line versus uh, Orange Cassidy. Now, both of these guys, Orange Cassidy, he's been over with the crowd for some time now. Uh, he's a day one of AEW, and he's been, you know, building up his momentum ever since uh, the company started. And y'all know he had got injured at a uh, revolution, and then he recently came back, had that fantastic matchup versus Will Ospreay at Forbidden Door. And, you know, he's, you know, coming back and he's, uh, uh, you know, rebuilding that momentum that he, he had going before um, that, that uh, injury. And as far as Wardlow goes, ever since he separated himself from uh, MJF and defeated him at Double or Nothing, um, he's on a hot streak. Um, he's definitely going to be one of the future major players uh, in AEW. And having that TNT title around him is definitely a good look, not only for Wardlow and for him to uh, further push his career, but also for the TNT belt because it's been having a lot of um, flack um, ever since, I guess, you know, Sammy Guevara uh, and Scorpio Sky, they kept, you know, switching the titles back and forth. It legitimizes the belt and it also legitimizes uh, uh, up and comer like Wardlow. And um, this match didn't disappoint. It had some, you know, uh, comedic uh, uh, a elements and aspects uh, to the match. Obviously, Orange Cassidy being, you know, who he is um he he does a lot of you know funny stuff in the ring and warlow played along with it and you know that helps develop warlow's uh character as he's on the come up and uh somebody that's beloved like orange cassidy for for his character and you know him playing along with that you know adds on to his character and his uh uh and his build with the crowd and the matchup uh it was a good matchup as well definitely a good opening contest and also uh the best friends uh chuck taylor and trent Beretta, they played you know a little role as well uh adding to the comedy value where they um try to help uh, orange cassidy win the match by you know trying to throw in a weapon in there um including the chainsaw as well that's how you know ridiculous um this segment was during the match it was you know a, a funny aspect uh to the match uh added on by by those two on the ring side um and obviously um they got caught and the referee had kicked them out of you know being a side with uh, orange cassidy during the match so they they had a match one-on-one -on -one. wardlow uh, won that match retained his tnt title in his first defense um and they they shook hands you know showing respect to one another for a hard fought match and then the second match that we saw was um luchasaurus um ever since uh christian cage turned heel um he's he's building this fuel right now with him and jungle boy jungle boy he's injured right now uh, all kayfabe aside i think that's the reason why not only um for the christian cage heel turn which christian uh, was teasing before uh jurassic express lost their uh, tag team titles a few weeks ago um christian cage been kind of teasing it by you know not being that nice mentor anymore you know giving um jungle boy to what a lot of fans looked at like you know tough love um but then when they lost the tag team titles that's when christian cage turned heel and then christian cage he's been on the hot streak he's been cutting uh, some of the best promos uh in the game right now and luchasaurus obviously being uh, former uh, tag partners with jungle boy 
uh, when Christian Cage uh, had uh, spoken out after turning heel, Luchasaurus came down to the ring. Y'all know if y'all been tapping in, but for those of y'all that's trying to catch up, tuning in right now, Luchasaurus came out to look like, you know, he was trying to get revenge for his buddy, but then Christian Cage got in his ear, and ever since then, it looks like Christian Cage is still mentoring Luchasaurus, and um, from the angle that AEW is pitching right now, it looks like Christian Cage has, you know, got a... Uh, a lot of influence over Luchasaurus right now, hence why he's managing them. And Luchasaurus playing this, you know, a cliche big man monster heel character right now is working with Christian Cage being his mouthpiece right now. And with Christian Cage cutting some of the best promo, um, I don't think Christian Cage has been on the road like this since his um like 04, 05 run back in the WWE. Um, he he's really you know on top of his game right now, and um. Uh, he, he, um, Luchasaurus was taking on, um, what's his name? Uh, the Blonde Varsity dude, um, no disrespect, I forgot, I forgot the dude's name. Brian Pillman Jr.'s tag team partner, um, you know, it, it don't pop up in the top of my head right now. But, you know, he, he jobbed out in that match, building more momentum towards, uh, Luchasaurus. And then, uh, Luchasaurus and C Christian Cage laid both the Blonde Varsity members out, uh, after the match. Then, uh... The current AEW interim world champion John Moxley took on uh, Takashita. Uh, he's uh, one of the uh, he he's jobbing out like technically, but y'all remember when we Yuta before he joined Blackpool Combat Club, how he was taking L's to Brian Danielson and John Moxley. The losses he's taking right now is building up his momentum as far as Takashita goes. He's taking on, you know, a uh, top caliber talent like John Moxley, Adam Page, Eddie Kingston, uh, well uh, beloved uh, wrestlers uh, right now who's on the top tier level of the roster and he's putting on the tough battles against them. So this is really just uh, building Takashita's momentum and uh, John Moxley versus Takashita. Uh, nothing less than, you know, we expect as wrestling fans, hard-hitting, a strong style type matchup. John Moxley won that hard-fought battle. Um, uh, he, he choked out Takashita with that bulldog choke. And, yeah, it, w it was one of them uh, matchups uh, that, that's usually featured on every uh, episode of Dynamite or Rampage. And yeah, um, nothing less than what wrestling fans expect out of uh, John Moxley and uh, Takeshita. And then we had uh, uh, Claudio Castagnoli making his uh, singles debut on AEW TV ever since uh, signing with AEW, uh, taking on a familiar face of Jay Kager. Of course, y'all know um, they had a run as tag team champions uh, back in the days uh, in WWE, and they put on a hell of a matchup on Dynamite um, with Casanoli uh, coming out on top. Um, JAS did make an interference with uh, Matt Menard and uh, Angela Parker trying to make an interference when uh, Casanoli had Hager um, in the sharpshooter. That had uh, broke up the hole, but that didn't stop uh, Casanoli from picking up the win. He would hit his uh, finishing move, the power bump, to uh, get the pin over uh, Jake Hager. Uh, a successful uh, singles match debut for Casanoli on Dynamite uh, this past week. And uh, Chris Jericho cut a promo um, promoting his uh, barbed wire death match coming up for week two of Fighter Fest uh, with him versus Eddie Kingston. They teasing this to be um, the final matchup between uh, Chris Jericho and Eddie Kingston, who's had a long heated uh, rivalry ever since um, Revolution all the way till now so they've had a good run um, I don't know what could be next with JES they one of the uh, hottest uh, uh, stables groups in uh, AEW right now um, Chris Jericho you gotta give him his credit for um, his uh, ability to uh, change characters and you know never run stale um, even in his career right now um, and Eddie Kingston obviously um one of the uh, most liked uh, wrestlers on that roster right now. And uh, Jericho, when uh, teasing this matchup, JAS is a uh, bar from ringside. They're going to be in the short case so they don't interfere uh, for this match. Um, he said, 
you know, he's playing that whole wizard character right now. But he said for this match, he gonna bring out the pain maker. As y'all know, that's like his, you know, hardcore twisted character, and that's who he's gonna be bringing out instead of the wizard for for his match with Eddie Kingston next week. Obviously, looking forward to it. Chris Jericho putting on uh, these these kind of matches at, at, at this point in his career is um is is, is it might look crazy but you got to respect the bravado and um um his uh, willingness to uh, participate in matches like that and you know this is a matchup uh Eddie Kingston this, this suits his style uh very much and uh, Chris Jericho he's he's been doing these type of matches so shouldn't be nothing new definitely looking forward to it. if you're a wrestling fan this is a match that you're looking forward to and this is definitely a main event worthy matchup for fight of um, and then it was a triple or nothing uh, AEW tag team title match between uh, the Young Bucks and uh, the only two-time tag team champions in AEW history, the Young Bucks, uh, making their first defense of a title after defeating Jurassic Express a few weeks ago in that ladder match. Um, I was surprised at that, but, you know, they already... You know, as we know, that they already had um, Jurassic Express splitting with Christian Cage being involved in that, so they they had to take the title off of them. Now I was surprised because you know the the Young Bucks uh, lost versus the Hardy Boys at Double or Nothing, and I guess they were planning for the Hardy Boys to have you know uh, the tag team title match versus Jurassic Express. Obviously, you know the latter match they revolutionized that match, but. Y'all know what's going on with the Hardys right now, so I, um, they couldn't, you know, have that match going. So I guess the Young Bucks, it made sense uh, for them to, you know, um, fill in that place for the Hardys. Now, this, this I don't know what's going on because I don't work with AEW. I'm only speaking from a fan perspective. I'm only going by what I hear. But, yeah, that's, that's what I heard. And um, this was their first title defense taking on Swerve in Our Glory and uh, Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. And I was really surprised at the result uh, of this matchup with Swerving on Glory, uh, picking up the win, becoming the new AEW Tag Team Champions. Um, apparently, like I said, this is from the dirt sheets. This is from the internet. This is all he or she say. I ain't saying this is facts or none of that, but uh, according to a lot of multiple sites, they saying that they've been planning for Swerving on Glory to become tag team champions um, just needed the right time for, for it to happen but I was very surprised because this was the Young Bucks first title defense ever since becoming the only two time AEW tag team champions uh, in the company history and for them to lose this quickly it, it goes to show that they were only uh, to be the transitional uh, AEW tag team champions and yeah um I was surprised because a lot of the fans uh were uh, saying oh uh, uh the Young Bucks versus F uh, FTR for all the tag team titles as y'all know um FTR currently holds three major tag team titles uh the ROH uh, world tag team titles and the AAA World Tag Team titles, and they recently won the IWGP Tag Team titles, and they were saying, you know, put all the tag team titles on the line with probably, you know, two of the best teams, uh, arguably two of the best teams currently in pro wrestling right now, um, but definitely I would say, um, without a shadow of a doubt, in AEW, FTR, and Young Bucks got it for being the best tag team uh tag teams in the company right now in my opinion but i guess AEW wants to have um their home growing tag team like swerving on glory hold the 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 main tag team titles the AEW tag team titles while i guess they could still go for um the young bucks versus ftr for all the other uh tag team titles that they have um and right now the young bucks you know the rest of the undisputed elite is injured you know they they were 
pitched to be in you know one of the major storylines as y'all know they they one of the major figures in AEW I mean they helped start the company right um so you know they saying you know with Omega being out now Cole being out O'Reilly and Fish being out um the Young Bucks are the only two currently active uh, members wrestling right now out of the uh, elite and the undisputed elite and it was rumored that they they we're gonna do that whole the elite versus the un, uh, the original undisputed, but right now I don't know where they fit in at the roster. I think what makes the most sense is they have that uh, rematch for their uh, tag team titles. I guess they're not going, you know, win back the tag team titles. Hopefully AEW doesn't do nothing like what they did with the TNT title for the feud between Sammy Guevara and Scorpio Sky with Young Bucks and Swerving Our Glory with all that back and forth for the AEW tag team titles have swerving our glory have a good run with the uh, tag team titles and after that the Young Bucks could potentially work their way to challenging FTR for all the other titles that FTR currently holds and that would be a great feud as well and like I said this definitely was a curveball I did not see swerving our glory winning the tag team titles I expected the Young Bucks to retain like I said did not expect them to lose the tag team titles as quickly and also um, before Swerving on Glory won the tag team titles it looked like they were going to split up Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland um, they, they were teasing that they were going to split because Swerving on uh, uh, Swerve eliminated Keith Lee during the uh, uh, battle royal and uh, and if y'all been uh tuning in to like aw dark y'all see like oh uh swerve strickland and keith lee they had you know some kind of you know um some kind of um dispute or some kind of um hidden anger towards one another ever since that happened and then even during the matchup when the young bucks were trying to cheat to retain their tag team titles and they were gonna hit one of the uh, participants in that matchup with the tag belts swerve uh, swerve picked up the tag team uh title that the young bucks brought into play when everyone was laid out then he looked at keith lee while keith lee was out in the corner um and looked at like you know, he he had that kind of like, you know, um, moment where he didn't know if he was gonna, you know, either he keep hit Keith Lee with the tag team titles or hit one of his opponents to cheat to win the tag team titles, but he dropped it, swerving our glory, won in an honorable way, and yeah, it definitely was one of the uh, best uh, tag team matchups so far this year, um, including the WWE include whatever company uh that wrestling has right now but you know i think this uh three-way tag team title match was better than the uh, uh three-way tag team title match that we saw at double or nothing uh i uh you had jurassic express instead of the young bucks that was the only difference between the three-way tag team title match uh, from Double or Nothing and last week's uh, Dynamite episode. Anyways, moving on to the uh, Rampage. We saw uh, and the claim go face to face after the Gun Club uh, turned on them. Um, and yeah, it, it was like a regular uh, promo, the acclaimed and the gun club did. They, they're a day one talent as well. And ever since they united and formed the group, they've been well over with the crowd. And I, I like this feud because you got two uh, young and up and coming and uh, uh, tag teams going uh, on in a in a feud with each other. And and it's got some momentum behind it, and it's got the uh, crowd's uh, interest. Uh, so this is a good feud, and I like how they get TV time as well. And yeah, and then we saw um, House of Black take on um, who was it? Who was it? A oh, Dark Order, Alex Reynolds, and uh, John Silver in a fantastic matchup with uh, House of Black coming out on top. Uh, uh, I think Brody King got the pin, and then Brody King and Malachi Black, as they were walking off to the back, um, Darby Allen came out of nowhere, flew on Brody King, started you know hammering away at him, 
Um, as y'all know, they, they've been building a feud between Bodie King and Darby Allen after Bodie King won, um, uh, uh, what do they call it? The, I would say the Royal Rumble of AEW. They got their own name for it. I think it was like called Rampage Royal or something like that. Whatever other, uh, other you know, match title they want to give it. Brody King and Darby Allin were the final two in that battle royal. And Brody King had won in a... Uh, uh, astonishing, astonishing fashion. I, I don't think I seen that kind of uh, elimination in a battle royal in a long time. Definitely a uh, statement Brody King made there uh, during that matchup. And ever since then, him and Darby Allen's been creating this feud, and both, both uh, Darby Allen and Brody King. Uh, I think they're both day one talents uh, for AEW, and they can work and. They're they're one of the most over. Well, definitely Darby Allen, Brody King. He he's more on the come up ever since you know he had that title shot match versus John Moxley uh, two weeks ago, and he won that battle royal uh, three weeks ago. So they're obviously pushing Brody King, and he's in a, a strong group with Malachi Black and uh, Buddy Murphy, and now Julia Hart. Um, and and then Sting and Malachi Black had this face off as well. So I guess they're gonna put House of Black and a few more specifically. I ain't seen Buddy Murphy out there with them. So more specifically, uh, Darby Allen and Sting taking on the King of the Black Thrones, which is Malachi Black and Brody King. Uh, and then we saw the Lucha Bros take on uh, party private party. Um, I don't know if uh, Andrade Family Office is still a thing ever since uh, Roosh, uh, Roosh signed with AEW. Um, Y'all saw on Double or Nothing, Idolo said uh, he's not aligning himself with AFO anymore, which was uh, Blade and Butcher and uh, Private Party. It, it looked at like Andrade got rid of them, but I don't know if Private Party is still associated with Roosh and uh, Idolo. But you had Idolo uh, ringside uh, managing Private Party during the match versus the Lucha Bros. Now, this was, you know, a, a, a decent match, okay match, regular, you know, AEW match that we all get to see on, on their programming on Dynamite or Rampage, whatever other AEW shows out there. Um, yeah, Lucha Bros picked up the win, even with Roosh interfering in the match. Um, and they're, they're doing a few. I'm not going to try and pronounce uh, the team name for Roosh and Idolo. My pronunciation is going to be off. I don't speak Spanish, so yeah, like I, like my Spanish is going to be off. Like I, I, I don't know the team name and I don't know how to pronounce it, but they in a few with lucha bros and i like the few because you know i'm not in tune i'm not tapped in with AAA or cmll or any of the wrestling scene out there like that in mexico but you know uh according to a lot of the fans that are tapped in with you know the international scene of pro wrestling they said rush and idolo are one of one of the best teams to ever come out of mexico and they taking on Lucha Bros, and this feud is based around, you know, not only a, a rivalry between these two teams, but Roosh and uh, Idolo, they they got like that new whole machismo and swagger, like this new style machismo and swagger to them, where they're not, you know, keeping up with the uh, luchador traditions, unlike the Lucha Bros. I mean, hence the name Lucha Bros. But you know, y'all know like. It's sacred for the uh, Lucha Libre wrestlers to keep their mask on. It's like their badge of honor. And Rush and Idolo, this, you know, modern day uh, superstar wrestlers out of Mexico, they've been disrespecting that tradition by ripping off the mask of uh, uh, Ray Phoenix and uh, Penta Oscuro. And that, 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 that intensifies the feud, that heats up the feud between the two teams. And I like how, you know, they get. Uh, TV time as well and I like the few that they building and all four of these wrestlers can work incredibly well and then uh, we saw um, Athena and Chris Statlander take on the Renegade Twins now I don't know who these girls are uh, I mean AEW keeps record of all of the wrestlers 
and I mean they haven't won a match so I guess they're jobbers um, maybe they could come up in the future or something like that but the, I've never seen them on AEW TV maybe they're talent that get featured on their YouTube shows ain't no disrespect I ain't never seen them before but on this episode as well they jobbed out to Athena and Chris Statlander um, obviously as y'all know if y'all tapped in with AEW's current product right now you got Jay Cargill and the baddies feuding with Athena and Chris Statlander and um I forgot her name like there's like this new um um I don't want to call her a baddie wannabe but Stokely had you know got in the ears of I think her name is Layla Hirsch or something like that she lost to Jay Cargill a few weeks ago on AEW Dynamite and after that match um like Athena and Chris Statlander um came in to save her when Cargill and the baddies was on her after the match attacking her but then Stokely got in the ears and then she you know uh, attacked Adina and Statlander which gave uh, enough room and opportunity for the baddies to come out on top and yeah ever since then it looks like she's trying not to want to join forces with the baddies but Jay Cargill and Kiara Hogan ain't really feeling uh, Layla Hirsch like that while Stokely is you know trying to get her involved and she got involved uh, in this match or uh, after the match after Athena and Statlander defeated the Renegade Twins uh, Layla Hirsch got on the rank side talking ish to Athena and Statlander obviously they wasn't having that so they were gonna whoop her ass in the ring for talking ish and then Jay Cargill and Kiara Hogan came out and with the numbers on their side they took out Athena and Chris Statlander and Stokely obviously looking stoked and you know he's talking to Jay Cargill and Kiara Hogan saying oh told y'all this ain't all bad whoa, whoa, whatever whatever so they doing that feud between the baddies and Adina and Chris Statlander and then um uh the main event for um AEW Rampage for week one of Fighter Fest we got to see Jonathan Gresham defend his uh, ROH world title um he made his return uh back into the ring he was injured after a battle of belts that's when he made his AEW TV debut and then he made his return last week teaming up with Lee Moriarty to take on um two of Tully Blanchard's uh, new clients they're uh, ROH talent I, for, I forgot their names, but they two big dudes in the tag team, and they, they can work, and they play that big man role very well, and um, that's when we saw Jonathan Gresham turn heel by joining Tully Blanchard's Enterprise. Um, he's the newest member of that group. Brian Cage is also in that group as well. Now, Jonathan Gresham, um, he's more of a technical submission style wrestler. Um, he don't really got a mouthpiece on him like that. Like, I... I, I I don't really keep up with ROH. I ain't even gonna cap to y'all. Like, I I haven't been tapped in with ROH, like, ever. And I've seen few clips from them of, of their heydays, like when, you know, CM Punk, Samoa Joe, and all their talents, they produce great talents. Like, the names could go on and on and on as far as talent goes uh, from uh, ROH. A lot of talent came out of ROH. And Jonathan Gresham, like like I said, um, I, I never tapped in with ROH like that. I've seen some of the product, but, you know, like, this is, like, I'm only tapped in for real with ROH and what's going on with them right now ever since uh, Tony Khan made that purchase. And now ROH is being featured on AEW. I ain't going to cap like I've been a diehard ROH fan, but I've seen some of Jonathan Gresham's work. He could definitely go in the ring, but as far as his promo skills go, I don't think he could, you know, like, I, I ain't trying to be no hater, but, you know, like, I think his wrestling ability definitely outshines his uh, talking ability. And to have somebody like Tully Blanchard, a legend like that, by his side, um, it definitely legitimizes um, his uh, caliber as a ROH world champion. So I definitely dug that whole heel turn, and I definitely uh, uh, 
like that that move that they made with having Jonathan Gresham join forces with Tully Blanchard. And I thought it was going to be Lee Moriarty versus uh, Jonathan Gresham for the ROH World title at the death before this on pay-per-view. But they had this match on Rampage this uh, past week. And it was a good contest. Definitely a classic wrestling match between the two. Like I said, when you have two workhorses like Lee Moriarty and Jonathan Gresham in there, you, go, you could only expect a great match to come out of that. Jonathan Gresham picked up the win via submission, making uh, Lee Moriarty tap out to retain his ROH world title. No interference, no dirty play in that match. And after Jonathan Gresham uh, uh, came out on top and retained his title, um, he let the fans know that he's going to be on AEW uh, uh, frequently now. And with Tolly Blanchard on his side, he said, you know, the sky the sky's no longer the limit and Tolly Blanchard's you know he's big enough uh Jonathan Gresham and as as they in the middle of uh, talking here comes uh, Claudio Casanoli and it's announced that it's going to be Casanoli challenging Gresham for the ROH world title at the up and coming uh death before dishonor pay-per-view now that is a good main event it's going to be a great technical wrestling matchup you got a powerhouse uh in casanoli and you got a submission grappler expert wrestler and jonathan gresham it's going to be a great style clash for the roh world title um definitely looking forward to that um, and now let's take a look at what's to come for week two for Fighter Fest. Uh, on Dynamite, obviously, we know the uh, main event, the barbed wire death match between Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho. And then it was announced uh, earlier. Uh, I don't know if it was announced today or yesterday, but now it will be Blackpool Combat Club's John Moxley, the current AEW Interim World Champion, and the ROH Pure Champion Wheeler Yuta taking on the best friends. And then you have the team of Christian Cage and Luchasaurus taking on Varsity Blondes. And then you have Darby Allen taking on Brody King. And then on Rampage, it's going to be Dante Martin versus Lee Moriarty. Now, all those matchups are watchworthy matchups. Uh, definitely look out for Lee Moriarty versus Dante Martin on Rampage uh, next Friday. That's going to be a high flying matchup. Now, if you went to that type of style of wrestling, Definitely going to not want to miss uh, Dante Martin's match versus Lee Moriarty. And then, obviously, the Christian Cage Luchasaurus taking on Varsity Blondes. That's going to be something that's going to um, build up more momentum and more steam towards Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. And their angle and what they got going on right now. And I don't know what else is to come for Fighter Fest Week 2. Definitely not a lot of previews when it comes to uh, Rampage. But for Dynamite, uh, the, the matchup cards are pretty much already set. And then um, one thing I forgot to cover, last but not least, uh, I'm going to be talking about what's been going on uh, as far as the women's division goes in AEW. Now that department is building and getting better ever since uh, it's recruited new talent. Um, you have the current women's world champion, um, what's her name uh thunder rosa she's formed the alliance with tony storm they got a team called thunderstorm and they're one of the most beloved figures in aew women's wrestling right now and then they are uh looking like they're going to be getting into a feud with someone who's been holding down the women's division in AEW since day one. I think Britt Baker and her friends have been a part of AEW ever since the start. And um, I would say as far as the women's wrestling goes over there, even though Thunderstorm is on top of the division as the women's world champion, I think Britt Baker she's the most over when it comes to the women's division in AEW and um it looks like her and Jamie Hayter is going to begin into a feud with uh Thunderstorm definitely a program to be looking forward to as far as uh, the women's division goes in uh, AEW right now uh earlier I covered what happened on Rampage between the baddies and Athena and Chris Statlander now they got a feud going on so they got 
two major uh, women's titles in AEW, Jay Cargill, the TBS champion, undefeated right now, and then Thunder Rosa, the women's world champion, and they got their own kind of team feuds going on on both sides right now, and as far as the women's wrestling goes in AEW, that's what's happening as of recent. Now, that does it for uh, my review video for AEW Fight Fest uh, week one, and I gave y'all a little preview to what's to come for a week two uh, for AEW Fight Fest. I definitely enjoyed uh, uh, this past week's episode of AEW Dynamite and Rampage. Good quality matches. And uh, hopefully week two follow it up with maybe a uh, better uh, week than week one. Um, and as far as the Death Before Dishonor event goes, I think on next week's episode of Dynamite and Rampage, uh, they'll build towards that event more and add more matchups to that card. Um, like I said, I enjoyed uh, Fighter Fest Week 1. Looking forward to Week 2. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all comments are, what y'all thoughts are uh, for uh, uh, what y'all saw for Fighter Fest Week 1, what y'all looking forward to for next week. Uh, yeah, share, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.